Hi, I'm Peter from Coffee Pass and today we're looking at the three leading manufacturers of automatic coffee tampers. In front of us we have the Puck Press Mini, the Art PT2, the Puck Press Q2 and the Slingshot Killer. Let's look in and have a look at what makes them different. Firstly, I feel like we should divide these up because there's a big dividing line between these two and namely their price point. So let's move these two a little bit closer and these two a little bit closer. So what we have is, with the automatic tamper range, we now have two affordable ones, mainly for lower volume or home, office, cafe use. The Sino Art actually can be used in cafes, but let's call them the more affordable of the range. And then we've got the two high end, like they're really up against each other competing for perfection. So in saying that, in Australia where we are, these two sit at under a thousand Australian dollars, where these two sit at nearly twice as much as that. So there is a bit of a divide, but let's look at what makes them different. On these two, on the lower end, which is a Puck Press Mini and the Ceno Art PT2, what you have is effectively the puck press is rated to 100 tamps a day. So more than what a home user would need and less than what a busy cafe would do. So, and with the Ceno Art, it doesn't have that restriction, but because they are a little bit slower with a little less functionality, they are a little bit differentiated from the top end of the game. So on these, you've got very similar functionality on the Ceno Art, you've got your touchpad on the top, the puck, you've got your touchpad on the side. Both have their power coming out of the rear. I've said this in so many videos, I hate powers coming out of the rear. I like that seamless look, like the power coming out the bottom. But that's just me, I'm weird, I'm different. And they're both running 58.3 mil tamp heads. Most water filters, including VST baskets, would work perfectly with them. When it comes to cleaning, they're both quite similar. In the case of the puck, you hold the bottom button here for half a second, the head comes down. You can quickly give it a wipe. If you want to do a deep clean, you can take your cover off, loosen the bolt in there, take the head out and clean the chamber inside. Kind of similar on the Ceno Art. We've done videos of both of them individually, so you can watch those videos for like a further review on how to actually do it. On this end of the spectrum, you're talking about high volume, busy cafes. Now you're talking about more functionality. So on, in the case of the Puck Press Q2, they're unlimited tamper rating, so they can go as much as you want all day with two year warranty. And you've got very similar capacity on the slingshot. Now, with the Q2, you've got five tamper functions from your normal double tamp, to your slower double tamp, your soft tamp, your heavy, like a Hulk tamp, and your single tamp. But in saying that, each tamp, if you're doing double tamp, they're both at the same pressure, and the pressure ranges from five to 30 kilos by one kilo increments. With the touchpad or the control being here on the side, compared to on the slingshot, you actually have three memories, so three tamp profiles that you can quickly access from the top. And each tamp profile, you can select between one and three tamps, and each of those tamps can be at a different weight. So basically, you can tamp profile. You could just go one quick tamp, or you could go to say three tamps at different tamp pressures, being to say five, 15, and 30, or whatever you want. Also, the cleaning function on the slingshot is a little bit easy in that you can hold the three buttons down, turn it off, turn it back on, and the head comes down and it's magnetically attached. So you can just pull it out, give it a quick clean, compared to the puck where it's very similar to the mini where the head comes down, you remove the cover here, loosen the bowl, put it all back together. There's a video on each of these, so we, you can look at those videos in detail. Once again, the power's out of the rear. With a slingshot, the power's out of the bottom. So in a home environment, which these two probably won't end up, doesn't make a difference. In a cafe, it's just nice to have that seamless look when you can cut through the bench and make them really just floating design. In terms of adjusting the porter filter support, the puck probably is a little bit nicer in that on the Q2s, you've got the dial here, you can loosen it. Just bring the dial, makes it easier to like basically hold that porter filter in, remove, it's still holding there before you tighten it. With the slingshot, a little bit more fiddly, more like these, but you're only really doing it once, so not here nor there. So looking at these really quickly, effectively what you have is home and low volume cafes, a bit slow, which does not matter for home or low volume cafes. Could also be like offices or small shops, like that kind of world. And 
the high-end speciality world. There is a tamper that kind of sits in between called the Puck Q1, but we don't really sell it because we tend to find people either go one way or the other. And obviously, Puck are the benchmark. They're the leaders, everyone knows them. You can walk into most cafes in Australia and see a Puck, especially in the higher-end cafes. Think of cafes that have EKs and Mythos and Anthems and Lama Zorkos, that kind of world. When the Slingshot is really fighting its way in there, they've really built an epic product, but they're just taking their time to gain that traction. But functionality-wise, they are awesome. So there you have it. They're your four leading tampers different price points, different uses, slightly different features. Effectively, they all tamp level, fast, flat. One last feature on the Kilo that I forgot to mention is it is the only one out of the four here that does give a 30 degree polish at the end. Some people like that, others don't. And it's also the only one that the tamp isn't perfectly flat. It's actually con, I think it's K where it goes in and it puts, like levels out the pressure out of the, they've kind of, it's covered in the video where they believe in the different distribution when all these three are flat tamps. If you look at each individual video, you'll get more detail. There's been videos on the park, the scenery, and the slingshot. So there you have it. There are four main ones. I'd love to know what questions you have for me on these tampers or other tampers. Do you still prefer a hand tamp? I know it's controversial. Basically the price is a huge difference to hand tampers. So very controversial but or do you prefer the consistency and the speed and the ergonomics of these? Love to know, hit us up in the comments below. Hit that bell button so you're notified every time we're posting videos. And obviously the most important, please subscribe. It means the world to us. It helps us grow our channel, grow our community, and we wanna help you guys grow and fall in love with coffee like we have. Thank you.